Good morning, friends. Today, we are discussing about various aspects of a very important items of communication. Already, I have given a hint in the last week about the body languages for interviews and GDs. Now, here I am going to focus especially on interviews. So far, what we have covered is we have covered about various aspects of soft skills, various types of soft skills personal skill, creative skills, or innovative skills, specialized skills. We have also talked about communication skills in which there are non-verbal and ver verbal. Verbal communication skills, I've kept it reserved, which will come along with the negotiations. There are several aspects I'll discuss, but rest of the things I have discussed so far. In the last two weeks, we have been discussing about different kinds of grooming, that when you are going to go for interactions, communications, then what kind of grooming you are supposed to have. So I hope by now you have covered all these aspects and you have got the idea about various kinds of soft skills that you should have or possess. Now today I am focusing on a very specific aspect called interviews because I had been getting a lot of requests from my students so that you know they can learn that how to really go for interviews. Now let me tell you, interviews as a subject, interviews can be for various purposes. One is a very important thing that if somebody is looking for a job and seeking an employment and giving an interview, very common one. Everybody thinks the interview means you are going for a job interview, placement interview. There could be interviews in which there will be somebody is trying to know more about another person like celebrities. In such cases what happens is a journalist, they interview the celebrities or experts or exponents to know more from him or her. That's another set of interviews. Another one is when you are going to go for negotiations or sales, at that time you are being asked certain questions. That's also a kind of interview. But today's focus of my discussion will be more towards the interviews which are related to jobs, employments, placements, recruitments. I hope this will be very beneficial to my students. But don't bother if you are not a student seeking for a job. If you are working somewhere now going for a second job means job change. In such cases also this is going to be very, very useful. It is, I'm going to give you certain tips. I'm going to give you a certain idea that how you should go ahead with it. And also going to give you an idea that what you should do, what you should not do. Let's start. Tips for the interviews. First is if you are going for an interview, whatever kind it is, be punctual and fresh. You must go before time have sufficient amount of time before the interview, a good amount of time before entering into the reception lobby for wherever you are going to go for interview, be punctual. There should not be a situation when your name has been called and you are not there. Forget about such some incidences or accidents in which might be delayed, but otherwise be punctual and always look fresh. When you are going there, you should see to it that you are looking very, very fresh. Next is how you en enter the interview room. When you enter, you must enter with a dignity. It is understood that you are looking for a job. That means you are on a receiver's end. People who are going to interview you, it is their discretion whether they select you or not. But never lose your dignity. You are going for the interview with a full dignity. When you enter the room, mind it, the moment you have gone to a reception lobby, I gave you a hint last time. The moment you have gone for interview and enter the reception lobby, you are being watched. The person, the gatekeeper watches you. The receptionist watching you. 
people passing by who belong to the office are watching you. Other members who are also the candidates are watching you. You are completely under watch. At every point, every moment, there should be a good reflection of dignity. Be poised. See, poise will come through what? Your grooming. All the grooming stuff that I've talked about in which how should you move your hand, how should you stand, how should you sit, how should you bend, how should you have gestures, what should be your attire, all together, it's a gro grooming by which a poise will come. That means anybody looking at you at a point of time should feel that yes, you are a good personality, apparently. How much you are good in terms of your quality or in terms of your caliber, that will be judged inside during the interview. One thing let me tell you here, when you're going to go for interview, basically you get an interview call. All your hard skills that you have earned in the past, all the experiences that you have gathered or gained, then you apply for a job. Your resume, your CV, that can fetch you only an interview call. Rest is all a different ball game. You, you might give some wrong inform information or false information in your resume. I have seen people have done it. But everything will be judged during the interview. But that may fetch you a call. That's all. But what I am discussing over here is all your other soft skills. Beyond hard skill which has facilitated getting a call for the interview through scrutiny is over. Now on, what you are, how you should behave, how you should move, how you should manifest. This is the point which I'm discussing. Okay, your poise is overall, overall appearance. Then, be a good listener. Whether it is during the interview or before the interview, be a good listener. If the receptionist is trying to give you some information, be a good listener. Don't show your anxiety. Don't show your urgency, that you're eager to know what is happening, you know, what's, when you're going to be called. Don't. Be a good listener. You lend your ear, you'll find that you'll get the proper information. You will not have any kind of cluttered information. One session here I'll give you. Be a good listener, but you don't try to listen to or gather information from other candidates. That's a very risky game that you're playing. If you think that you can gather more information from the other candidates, that quite often there may be false information. I will tell you more in detail later on. But be a good listener. During the interview, be a good listener. If somebody is asking you a question, then listen to the question very carefully and then answer. Now, during interview, what will happen is it can be one-to-one -one interview. You are being called for the interview to discuss with the chairman or MD or maybe a head of the section. It may be one to one. That means you are the person who is giving interview and another person sitting opposite to you who is taking interview. It may be one to one. It may be one to many. Means you are giving the interview and that there are many other candidates, many other, sorry, many other uh, interviewer. Now in the many other interviewer, how many you don't know. It may be more than once, two, three, four, five, 8, 12, 15, you don't know. And neither you are given any hint. You know, when this particular band of interviewer gets expanded, when they are looking for a person with different kind of objectives to be fulfilled by the company, in such cases, various experts will sit there to judge you so that once you are appointed or you are taken to the organization, then whether you are meaningful or useful to multiple other sections. That's why many experts, many heads of that organization will sit to interview you alone. But in such cases, be a good listener. Everybody will feel the question. Listen to the question very carefully. Don't jump into your answers. Don't halfway start answering questions because you might not have heard the full question. Wait for the end of the question and see what has been asked for and then you respond. 
During interview, you volunteer information. If they are asking you for some information, you volunteer it. You don't have to hold back any information because you are basically, truly speaking, you are at the receiver end. Though I am saying that you have to have confidence, I'll talk about it more later, but mind it, you are at the receiving end. They have the discretion to select you or unselect you. Okay? Now, you, if they are asking for any information which you think that you can provide, then you volunteer. If you volunteer the information and if it is for the benefit of the company, then there is a better chance that you will get selected. Be frank and honest. Never in any interview give any false information. That means, bluntly saying, never tell a lie in an interview. Be honest. Be honest to yourself. Be honest to the situations. Be honest to the questions. And be frank. If suppose there is a question which has been asked during the interview and you don't know the answer, it is always better that you tell the interviewer that, sorry, I don't really know about this item or I have heard about it but I don't have a clear idea about it. You know, when you give this kind of idea, this kind of frank or honest statement, it goes into the positive reactions to the interviewer. Then they ask you a second question, another question. But they will not tell you that, oh, you don't know this answer. In case that answer was very vital for them, then there is a chance that you will not be selected. But however, at least they will respect your honesty that you have said honestly that you don't know about it. And now, let me also caution you, if there are 10 questions in total, and in all 10 questions, your answer, honest answer is, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know, then you should be taken for granted that you are not selected. But that does not mean that you will give a false impression or you will give a bluff. Because if you tell something which is a lie, then definitely one of the experts will catch you on, the wrong, on your, your wrong foot. Okay, so be frank and honest. There are situations to make the atmosphere very comfortable to everybody that one of the interviewer or jury might, you know, just cut a joke or offer a humor. You should have sufficient amount of intelligence to understand the humor and enjoy the humor. Most often what happens is I have seen that the in person who is giving interview he becomes very tensed and then he is trying to look at all the persons very tensed, internally stressed that any wrong move, any wrong answer would lose the job. You know? So in such cases what happens is the interviewer, they will just make you comfortable with some kind of humor. Enjoy it. And enjoy it only to the level that you just give a smile, a soft smile. I have talked about the soft smile in the past. Give a soft smile so that to acknowledge or to you know communicate that you have understood the humor and you appreciate the humor. But the thing is, if there is a humor and everybody is laughing, but you become you remain very rigid, not really reacting to it, that also goes negative. Okay? So enjoy the humor. You get it or don't get it, there's a probability of 50-50. But the thing is, humor is always a gain. Next is be well mannered altogether. In the whole interview, the way the from the time that you have entered the office to the reception, then to the interview room, and while going out, and also leaving the office. Be well mannered at every step. Suppose you have given a very good interview, and then you had been well mannered all through, but when you came out, while coming out of the main gate, somehow you have misbehaved with somebody, or there is some ill manner ref, you know, rep, reflected by you, for whatever reason, that information will flow back to the selection committee. So the person who entered last, you know, he misbehaved with our people while going out. Immediately, you will get discarded. So be well mannered, all through. So now if I say, summarily, up to this point, reach the interview spot much beforehand and always look fresh. I have given you an idea before how to be fresh. I suggested that you should carry a kind of, you know, a powder in your pouch and a puff and a handkerchief and before entering into the reception, uh, 
the interview room, you look for the washroom, wash your sweats, and then wipe off your sweats, and you use your powder to a certain extent just to you know absorb the sweats so that you look fresh. You comb your hair. Take care of your dresses that it's in the right place. All these are very, very, very important because it's a play. It's a total play that you are going to act during that interview time, whether it's five minutes to one hour, whatever time, okay? Be dressed for success. The attire I've talked about. During grooming, I have talked about this. Be dressed for the success as if you are almost selected. I gave you this hint before that when you are going for an interview, you should be so dressed as if you are representing that company. You don't be casual thinking that let me be selected, then I will be properly dressed. No. Be dressed for success. If you are properly dressed, that adds some points because your overall personality is going to be judged by the interviewer. It's not only your caliber, your qualification. Overall, get up. That's going to be very vital for you. So be dressed for success. And never think that you are not going to be successful. Be warm and responsive to everybody. Now, let me focus more about your manifestations within the interview room. I'm leaving aside your manifestations, which probably would have been some in your reception lobby while coming in or while leaving the office. Here, I'm focusing more on the interview room. You should be warm. You should be responsive. You should not look rigid. You should not look tensed. Any question that's being asked, you, it's being filtered to you. Sometimes your psychology is being tested by the interviewer asking you some questions by which how do you react to it? How do you respond to the questions? They judge you. Okay, so whenever, whenever you are facing this interview boards, you should be very warm. At the same time, you should not be very casual, very callous, very overconfident. These points I'll discuss. Very important point is follow the interviewer's lead. Here, let me consider that you are facing an interview where there are more than one interviewers. One person has fielded a question, you answered. Answer might not be to the expectation. Then another person would ask you another question, which may be a cue or a lead, which is going to give you some hint. Catch that hint. Follow the interviewer's lead. Don't miss it. You know, if you could not answer a question properly, you will get your own feeling that I could not answer the question properly. Or the interviewer might give you a reaction that, okay, the answer is not right. Immediately you feel lost. There may be another person sitting next to you as an interviewer who is going to give you a clue or a hint. Or maybe he is going to give you a lead to the correct answer. Because that person feels that you know the answer only because of your tension, you are not being able to recollect or retrieve. So he'll give you a lead. So follow that lead. You have to be very carefully following the lead. Here, the idea is that you have gone for the interview. Basically, you are going to sell yourself. Yourself means your caliber. You have been called for the interview. You are selling yourself, making yourself worthy for that particular company so that they select you. And so you are selling. You are selling yourself. You don't give any kind of hint that, okay, I've come for the interview, but I'm really not interested for this particular position. Don't give ever such kind of hints to the interviewer because you have gone there to sell you. And it does not necessarily mean that if you are selected, you will take it because I have seen many candidates, good candidates, who are giving interview to three or four places. Ultimately, he is in a position to select which one he is going to choose in case he has been offered jobs in more than one, in, from more than one institutions or organizations. So the point is, whenever you are selling yourself, you be very careful, very critical, very honest. But the thing is, you never give an idea that I have got a job somewhere else. I have come here just to face this interview, but I may not take this job once I am selected. Such kind of statements you never make. 
you always go there as if you are selling yourself as a product which will be worthy for the particular company. Be assertive. Being assertive is not easy when you are giving an interview, when you are at the receiving end. It's not easy. But the thing is, if you are right, then be assertive. If your answer is right, if your expectation is right, if your claim is right, if your request for compensation is right, then be assertive. You, I don't say that you push or you force, but you be assertive to that. So that people really judge you that you are honestly saying what you are and you are honestly expecting what you should. Control your own behavior. What happens is, interview is a game to be enacted by the interviewer and the interviewee. Now, interestingly what happens is, depending on the duration of the interview, it can take any shape or any kind of, it can go into any direction. It can lead to a kind of hilarious situation. It can be a very interesting interview enacted. It can be a very dull one. It can be a good learning for the interviewer as well. If you are very knowledgeable, if you are very capable, they get excitement when they are interviewing you. It is because of which some interviews do last for the same position. Some interview will last for five minutes and, and the next one will last for one hour. What went different? It is in five minutes the interviewer could realize that this candidate is not worthy for us, so no point wasting our time. So they will ask you to leave. And the next candidate who entered and the interviewer is now exploring and finding out that this candidate is a very bright person, we can really, if we ask them more questions, maybe more and more openness will come into the interview, into, into the candidate and he will start speaking more about himself and his caliber which could be worthy for selection. So they keep on going for it. It goes up to one hour, sometime more, depending on what is the position for which they are being selected. But during that particular play, there can be a behavioral change in the candidate as well as in the interviewer. Okay? For you, See here, I am considering every, I am discussing every tips only in favor of the candidate. I am not talking anything about the interviewer. There are many ways of looking at the interviewer. Here, control your own behavior. Don't get suddenly over elated if you had been, you know, answering questions repeatedly very right. Don't lose your temperament if you had been, you know, I won't use the term called bullied, but you are being teased for your wrong answer. You must have a very controlled behavior. All these require a little bit of practice internally. You remember in the last earlier classes, I have given you a hint how you should practice such kind of grooming within yourself. Avoid use of the informal language or the short forms. It is something like, I will give you a hint before, acronyms or such kind of things. Like if suppose you have been asked. Do you know about this particular theory? Suppose you don't know because you have not been taught. Your answer should not be, uh, no, I don't know because my prof never taught me this. The prof, basically you meant the professor. My prof never taught me this. These kind of short forms are absolutely derogatory for interviews. Use a proper word and proper pronunciation. Practice it. And if you have been practicing in your schools, you will definitely get the good idea about it. But never use informal languages like, if suppose you are asked that when you study, how do you make group study? Never say that in our hostel, we guys used to sit and then study. Never say that we guys used to sit, means you friends, or we folks used to sit. No. You say my classmates, I used to sit with my classmates or my hostel mates or my friends. Never use these kind of terms called guys, profs and many other. Okay? Don't use informal language. You don't have to use jargons, but your language is a reflection of your personality. Show loyalty. During the interview, they should be very clear about one thing. 
that you are loyal intrinsically. Whoever will appoint you, with whom, whomever you will work, whoever will select you, you will be loyal to them. That should be reflected through your gestures, through your speaking styles, through your conversations. Show loyalty. That loyalty which finally if they select you, they are sure that they are going to get a loyal person in by or say included in the company. Then the next set, hold your confidence. See confidence is one thing which makes you enter the interview room, perform the entire interview, keep on answering questions and then leave the room. Entirely during this duration, you must hold your confidence. Never lose your confidence. I have seen people ask, being asked so many questions one after another loses the confidence. You know, quite often these are all kind of style of interviewing. Of course, the interview styles have changed to a great extent over the past many years. But quite often it might happen that one person asks a question, before you finished your answer, another person asks another question, not giving you much chance to listen to the second question properly and not even allowing you to finish the first question. By the time you have come almost three-fourths of the answer to the second question, another person is going to field your question. It may happen. It's basically the game plan of that particular interview group. They are testing you. They are testing your confidence, confidence levels, that how do you respond in such kind of situations when multiple questions are being shot from different angles. How do you respond to that? You can do one thing. Suppose a question has been asked. The second question has been fielded before your answer was complete. Then you can finish your answer. And then if you have missed the second question, you can now ask, would you kindly repeat your question? That's a good gesture. Because this has been done very deliberately to see that how do you respond to this? If question over answer is asked, Never, I give you this hint before, never ask a question against a question. If you have been asked a question, the answer should not be another question, it should be an answer. If you don't know the answer, then you clearly, honestly express that you don't know the answer. But something like, I'll give a hint. Do you remember the laws of gravity? And then you try to remember that you ask, your answer is something like, is it, you start with, is it this, 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 this? That means you have started with a question, but your answer was supposed to be something else. You will not do this. Never ask a question against a question. Okay, if you are holding your confidence, in such cases you will find that you will always give right answers. And if you don't know the answer, you will clearly demonstrate you don't know the answer. This is a very strong point which I am discussing. Do not indulge in character assassination. What happens during the interview is two kinds of character assassination will happen. Was in internally it is going on. When you look at the persons, suppose you know one of the interviewer is a very strong personality, but he is not very soft to anybody because he is a highly knowledgeable person and he is asking, he would always ask questions and brush the candidates. You may have this kind of interviewer. But immediately your reaction if it is like, so oh, this gentleman is here, oh he is going to ask me questions which are not going to be very compatible or comfortable and he is definitely going to you know, tease me or pull my leg or sometime. I have heard candidates saying, sir actually I attended one interview before. In the second interview when I went, there was one professor who you know, asked me a lot of questions and never happy with my answer. In the second interview, I found him there. Immediately, my entire confidence got shattered. It simply indicates that he has a character association problem. He already has framed the opinion about that particular expert. The moment he saw it next, him next time, automatically his confidence got shattered. And 
This you never do. Every time, every interview is a fresh one. Always treat every interview as a fresh one. Doesn't matter if the same set of interviewer is sitting in front of you in the next one. So it may so happen that you have applied for a position in a department in one of the institution. And first time you were not selected. And the second time you have been shortlisted for interview. And then at that point of time, you know that everybody in front of you are the same persons. Don't start judging the characteristics or characters of those persons, whether somebody called you this. Next, know your worth. You should know what's your worth. What is your, what you possess, what skill, what knowledge. You must know your worth. Also be aware of your weakness. You should know that you are weak in which front. And if you, you know that you are weak in which front, if any questions are shot at you, then you try to defend yourself by expressing that I don't know. But never say something like, you know, in one of the interviews I asked a person, the candidate was saying that I am expert in computer. Then my question was, computer means what? Is it programming? Or how to type in the computer? So it's a programming. I said, fine. What programming language do you know or you are expert in? The candidate answers, I know some C and some Java. It simply gives a very clear idea that if somebody knows some C and some Java, the candidate does not know about any of these languages, programming languages. If the candidate would, wouldn't have said that I am expert in computer, if the candidate would have said that once I get an opportunity I will learn, it would have been a better choice for us. The moment the candidate said, I know, I know some C and some Java, that means nothing, immediately got discarded. So the weakness has been exposed. So if you have the weakness, get, you know, always try to see that your weakness is never exposed. There's another thing which happens is interview fatigue. It's not necessary that you will be always, you know, selected in the first interview or the second interview. So you keep on giving interview one after another. It happens in all the institutions during that placement period. Different companies are coming and you are sitting for the tests and then you are, if you are qualifying in the test, you are called for the interview or GD and then finally the, when the shortlisted candidates or selected candidates list comes, your name is not there. You don't lose heart. Of course you do, but you don't lose heart. You try for the second one. The second one you go for the same process and you found that you are not selected. So what happens is one after another, if you keep on giving interviews, it takes a lot of stress, you know. And this brings in fatigue. And the interview fatigue, if you have, then it is a very dangerous thing happening at you. You know, try to see that you don't have fatigue. Every time go with a fresh mind. The first one you did not get selected. You try to see the candidates who got selected. It's not necessary that every time a candidate better than you will be selected. Because there may be certain criteria by which the candidate got selected who is your friend. But you know that the friend is not as good as you in some of the other factors. But that company has selected your friend because of some strength. Okay? So he or she got it. You haven't got it. The next time when you go, the third interview, you lost. The fourth interview, you lost. The fifth interview, by the time, you know, we are giving interviews after interviews, as it starts in most of the institutions from December to, say, February, during this time, say about three months, you gave many interviews and by the beginning of February, you, have, you are already fatigued. Never have the interview fatigue. It's very easy said, very difficult to do it. But my suggestion is try to overcome this fatigue. And more is don't listen to others. If somebody asks you, have you qualified in the last interview, you have to say no. How many interviews have you given? You will say five. You are going for the sixth interview and already you have expressed to somebody else that five interviews you did not get selected. So your fatigue will get aggravated if the person says, oh, you have already lost in five. You know, your fatigue gets aggravated. Fatigue is nothing but a, some physical fatigue and more mental fatigue. And then do not press the interviewers. I have heard quite often the last, you know, we give a chance to the candidate during interview. Okay, we have asked you lots of questions and you have answered. Do you have any question? Then the question shot by the interview is something like, 
sir, what is the probability that I'll get it? Never press. This is a kind of pressing. Or sometimes, even something like, you know, if you feel, if the candidate feels that he or she is likely to be selected, then while getting out, you know, getting out of the room says, okay, see you soon. That means you are giving a pressure. See you soon means you are taking for granted that you are selected. May not be. So never put pressure onto the interviewer. There is one thing called concluding the interview. How do you conclude the interview? Interview has started. Once you go and sit there, I will discuss about how you go in, how you sit and all that in detail. Once you go and sit and then the chairman of the interview board shoots the first question and interview starts rolling. The whole drama now starts rolling. It has to conclude and the conclusion has to be done either by the interviewer or by you. How you conclude the interview, it is not very easy to really predict because it is something like, you know, when you have found that all eight interviewers have asked you a question and then what do you do? Then whom do you look at? The chairman. If you identify who is the chairman, once you have answered all the persons and you look at the chairman, you know, expecting that the, now the interview should be concluded. Okay? So concluding the interview is another style. But there are two things which I will now bring forward to you. Give an interview, remember all the questions, remember all the reactions of a different interviewer and you have a post interview retrospect. How you answered, what did you do when you entered, how the questions were asked, who was smiling at you, who was rough at you, who was very sober to you, who gave you a hint, who gave you the lead. You have a post interview retrospect yourself and never share this with any other competitors. Take it for granted. If you share your experience just half an hour before till the last moment by the time you have come out, you share this experience with your candidate, another candidate or competitor who is going to enter next, he is halfway prepared by you. So you do the post interview retrospect, may not be there, come back home, sit quietly and think what has happened over that last half an hour's time during the interview. Post interview retrospect is very, very important. That will tell you what is your weakness. And the last one is judge the interviewer, a very tricky thing, very tricky thing. When you have entered the interview room, you should be in a position to judge the interviewer. So in my next lecture, I will discuss about how to judge the interviewer because different interviewers are having different kind of characteristics. Okay? So, so far, take note of these tips and see how you can, you know, structure yourself for good interview. Okay? Thank you.